So today I want to talk about how to cancel or abort a fetch call. So sometimes you can send a fetch call off to get some data from the server and it's just taking too long or the user has moved on to some other task or you decide if it goes beyond a certain point, you don't want to wait any longer, you want to fetch something different. So how do we cancel the old fetch call? That's what we're going to look at today with abort controller. So I have a setup page here just a basic simple example I'm using JSON placeholder I'm going to click a button do a fetch so when I click my button that's this one right here it will do the fetch and then it brings back some data and there it is so we got the data that comes back and this works across any of the major browsers we just do a fetch there's the URL my global URL um, convert it to JSON write out a console log message and I've got my catch to handle errors simple enough. So how do we cancel this? How do we set up something in our code that will prevent it from continuing? Well, that's where we get this abort controller. So when you create one of these abort controllers, and you can create multiple abort controllers on the page, each one tied to a specific task, what we're going to do is this controller is going to have something inside of it called a signal. There's a signal property inside of there. When we do the fetch, we're going to take that signal property and put it in our fetch. So down here, there's going to be another argument that we pass in, which is the signal. It's part of the options object that we pass into the fetch. The signal object is now something that is connected to our fetch. So if our fetch controller calls the abort method, that's what kills it. That's what stops the fetch from happening. So how do we do this? Well, Inside of here, we need to get that signal property so we can pass it into the fetch. So we'll start with that. We'll say const, and I'm going to use um, destructuring here just to pass in my fetch controller. There we go. So I'm passing the fetch controller to this object. We're extracting the signal property, putting it in a variable called signal. That's what we're using. And then that is what we're going to pass in here. So inside the options object, we're going to say signal. We're passing that in as one of the options. Now this is going to make a property called signal have the value of this variable signal. Okay, so that in itself doesn't affect anything. We can still run this. It goes off, does the fetch, brings the data back. Now you'll notice it's taking a little bit of time here. That's because over in my network tab, I've set it to slow 3G. So it's taking a little bit of time to come back. That's just going to make it easier for us to see when we do and don't abort. Okay. So we have our signal put in there. We're not doing anything with it yet, but we've now attached our abort controller to this fetch call. So we created one of those and we attached it to the fetch. Now I could have put this inside of here, but this is just to show you can create it here and then I could use it with different things or I could create a bunch of these globally and use them throughout the code um, just in case you're going to have multiple functions which are dealing with the fetch calls. All right, so back to this. We've got our signal. We've put it into our fetch. Now what we want to do is we want to call the method. So there's the fetch controller and it has this abort method. That's what we want to use. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a timer. We're just going to use set timeout. It's going to give us back a reference to our timer. And inside of here, I'm going to have a simple little function that's going to run at let's, let's say five seconds. So 5,000 milliseconds, five seconds. If it's still running after that, then it's going to cancel this. And we cancel it just by putting this inside of here. That's all we have to do. And I'll add a console log so we can see that it does abort when this runs. Okay. Now, right now, this timer is going to continue running. I'm not canceling it. I'm not stopping it at all. So it is going to run, but it's going to be after the data comes back in my network. Let's put this back up to full speed. I run the fetch. There we go. We've got the data that came back immediately. And there's the abort happening after the five seconds. So the abort happened long after. But what's the sense in calling the abort and killing 
this fetch if we run it again in the future. So I don't want to run this if I got to this point. So inside of here, I'm going to kill my timer. We're going to say clear timeout. Timmy, that's my reference to it that we created right here. So I'm going to say, if I get to this point and I do have the data, cancel this so it doesn't run the abort. There we go. We have our data back. One, two, three, four, five seconds have gone by. This never ran. So that's good. That's what we want to have happen here. Now, just to show that we can do the abort, I'm going to set this down to some small value. Let's go down to 10 milliseconds, so a hundredth of a second. If we don't have the response from our fetch in a hundredth of a second, we are going to call the abort. And that abort is actually going to trigger the catch. It's going to cause an error. So let's take a look at that. There we go. Immediately, the abort. After one hundredth of a second, we get that. And inside of here, here's our error object. You can see that the name is abort error. The type is a DOM exception. The name is abort error. So if you wanted to inside of the catch, we can test for that. We can look at the error object and say, hey, is your name abort error? If it is, I know the reason why this catch is running. It's not because there was something wrong with the network request. It was just, it took too long. So I intentionally told it to stop. And that's how we can cancel this. And this will work in Chrome, in Firefox, in Opera, and in Safari. Safari was the last one to add support for this, but this was about two years ago, or almost two years ago that it added support. So if I jump here over to Safari, we can run the same thing, start the fetch, and there it is. The abort happened immediately. If I jump back in here and I put this back up to, well, let's say three seconds, There we go. You can see we do get the data that comes back. So there it is. That's Chrome, Safari, all the major browsers are covered. And this is how we can now cancel a fetch call. So I hope that helps you out. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll answer as many as I have time for. Um, if you found this helpful, please subscribe or share. And as always, thanks for watching.